What's going on guys, Brian's here. Today is Friday, December 29th, 2023, and the market is open. I have the opportunity here to hop on and share a live trade example again. This time I'm using a broken wing call butterfly and I'm going to justify the reasons behind why I entered the trade. I'm gonna be talking a little bit fast because again, the market is open and it is actively uh, falling right here and I'm missing out on opportunities to take some trades, but I figured it'd be pretty neat to get on and actually uh, share a live example. So this week we've all been aware of this 475 level. I've shared at least three videos now at this point on this. I'm not going to be talking about the levels as I've discussed that enough this week and you guys can check out the previous video videos, especially if you're watching this video in the future, just check out the links in the description down below to some of the previous videos that were released this week. Now, as the market is falling, we come down to this 475 strike. One of the things in which I was thinking was selling some put out the money put options. So this on the right hand side is the SPX and this is the SPY. So if I sold some out the money put options for down here, the expectation would be that the uh, puts have inflated in price as we're selling off, but I'm not really expecting the markets to go much lower than right around here. So I can sell some puts and and, you know, capitalize on some theta decay. However, I did not get the exact fill in which I wanted. So I didn't want to chase price. I started mocking up a better trade that I think that would have been a little bit less risky using a similar amount of capital. So if we take a look at my risk profile here, this is what I entered. And this is a call broken wing butterfly. So what we're looking at is this risk profile. This is at today's expiration. These are zero DTE expirations. I'm in four of them right here. And this is the current spot price. So this is my current PL. I've added a couple slices on the chart. So if the market it was to return to 47.80. This is this slice right here. I'll be down about 230 bucks. And that's if this happened right now. And then at the same time, if the market was to keep selling, this trade will be worth $240. But what you guys can notice right here is pretty much as long as the spot price of the SPX remains below 47.80, this trade makes $240. If the market does rally and we end up back in what's referred to as the opening range, which is this region right here, it ends up being a potential major win with a maximum potential of making about $2,000. So I'm in four of them, but I do like to demonstrate these trades using just one on option strat as I I think it's easy for you guys to see exactly how much margin is being used, what the max loss is. You guys can scale up and scale down accordingly. So this is what the trade looks here. I'm using $440 in margin per trade. As I shared, I'm in four of them. So if we were to mock this up right here, you guys can see exactly what the trade looks like. So four of them means I'm using about $1,800 in capital to actually execute this trade with the potential to make 240 bucks. The reason I decided to enter a trade like this is because I generally favor high probability of success type of trades. So this is a trade that has a very high chance for profit, a POP, which is a probability of profit versus just buying a put or buying a call. I generally need a lot more conviction if I'm going to buy an option. There was an entry up here to actually buy some puts because we had confluence. However, at the start of the day or pre-market, I had no intention of actually buying puts. It's the last trading day of the year. So I didn't even have any puts mocked up in my watch list or anything like that. I was just looking for a high probability, high conviction type of trade. And this right here is, as you guys can see, I've drawn out what is the just about the opening range. So this is the low end right here. So the first 15 minute candle is what I'll generally use if I'm referring to the opening range. Some traders use 30 minutes, some traders use 15. I like to use 15 minutes and the opening range is at the bottom of that 15 minute candle and the top of that 15 minute candle. However, I just stretched this one up here just to, you know, showcase this is essentially the high of day. So if we pay attention to this range right here, so 47.82 to we'll call it 47.90, that is in a sense what covers this range here. So 47 80 all the way up to 47.90 we'll say so right in this 10 point window right here is that sweet spot so if the spx was to somehow bounce and come all the way back up to here and then close in this area it ends up being a major win if as long as it remains below this strike price right here is that is the break even you guys can see it's 47.90 so a little bit more buffer so actually right up here as long as the spx remains below this strike it doesn't matter where it lands as long as it is below this strike this trade will make at least $240 by the end of the day or potentially $2,000 if it ends up being right in this sweet spot up here. These types of scenarios is what you can do when you trade spreads and more specifically when you trade butterfly spreads because there's so many different ways to actually structure these trades i'm just using a scenario that i think is very probable we have vwap right here we have the two-day anchored vwap we have multiple confluences that can potentially act as some sort of resistance now that price is below 475 this strike price might actually act as some sort of resistance anyone that's selling puts for below here their expectation is time will just eat away at those puts because now it's a good opportunity to actually sell these puts however it's a little bit risky because 
because you're going to be using a lot of margin to potentially make maybe 50 cents in credit. So if we were to sell, you know, some puts all the way out here, they're not very probable to expire in the money. But for every $1,000, you might only collect 50 cents in credit. And I'm just using an arbitrary example here versus when I was mocking up this trade, I wanted something around 50 to 60 cents credit, because if I was to run a put credit spread, that's probably going to be what I would be looking for. For example, if we were to actually just mock one up right now, just so we can see what one could potentially be going like if we were to hop down here. Let's see what the delta on this is a nine delta. So let's go even lower and see what we have. So this is a 0.5 delta. So let's use something like this. Let's make it a little wide. So I like to keep the margin around a thousand for these types of trades. You guys can see the credit is only 30. So let's actually just bump this up a little bit and try to get at least 50 cents credit because anything below 50 cents is generally not that interesting. For my risk parameters, I would like to receive at least 50 cents credit if I'm doing some sort of zero DTE uh, credit spread. But this right here is a delta less than 10. So this is pretty good, you know, low probability of this expiring in the money. And that's after the drop. So if we look at 47.25, it's all the way uh, down here on the chart. So let's zoom out 47.25. We're selling this put all the way down here. So the SPX would have to fall an additional, uh, let's see, additional 0.75%. It's already now down about 0.40% from yesterday's close. So that is the net change from today's open. If we were to take a look at that, that is a 1.2% drop. It doesn't mean it's not probable or unrealistic because we all know the SPX can very much so do that, but we do have some potential support levels here. We have this level here, we have 474, which was an absolute gamma strike. We have this level here, we have last week's close, we have the max pain strike. It would have to get past a few of these levels before it would get down here. And if you know anything about put credit spreads, the longer it takes to do it, you can actually still be profitable. So even if it was to go all the way down to 47.30, that 47.25 put, yes, you will be red for some period of time as the SPX continues to sell off. However, if it just stalls out for maybe 60 minutes or so, that put will start losing on so much of its value because the closer and closer we get to today's close, time decay is just going to become more and more harsh. So that's why people like to run those sorts of put credit spreads. But I like to take a look at if I can get a similar credit for what I'm looking for. So if I'm looking for 60 cents credit for a very high probable trade, because you guys can see right here, again, not to base your decisions just off of what option strat says is the chance of profit. A lot of that is being calculated also straight from the deltas. If you're using some sort of platform like Tasty or if you're using Thinkorswim and you're looking at the options chain, you can turn on the probability of in the money or the probability of out the money, or you can just take a look at the deltas. The Greeks will largely determine the probability of success with these types of trades but all i know is i'm looking for 60 cents credit i'm understanding how much margin is going to use for how much risk i generally allocate to zero dt trades so if i was running something like this i would not exceed five grand so i'm looking for about 200 and 50, 250 bucks or so going into power hour. However, if I'm going to use a trade like this, I understand I might need to risk at least two to three times this. So if I'm looking to make 250 bucks, and it means I need to be willing to risk at least 700 bucks because it is such a high probability of trade. The idea is you can run this trade in nine or sometimes at least eight out of 10 times you should profit on this. So you have to open up your risk parameters. However, I'm not the greatest zero DTE credit spread trader. I generally prefer to use zero DTE butterflies because there's a little bit more of versatility and i also like the idea of potentially still hitting a major return but yet still bringing in the same amount of credits that a traditional zero dte credit spreads trader would run because even now if i was to close this trade out being up 200 bucks right now as we're talking that is essentially how much someone would have made from the zero dte put credit spread and the market is continuing to go lower however if i ran the credit spread i would actually be down probably a couple hundred dollars right now if you know anything about technical analysis, when I open up this trade, let's just say the markets did bounce back up off of that key level of 47.70, which coincides with 40 with 475 on the SPY. If the market did bounce, it probably would have stalled out around VWAP. And then even if it got higher, it probably would have stalled out around the two day anchored VWAP, or it more than likely would have stalled out right at the opening range. That's just general price action. If you don't know anything about the opening range, it's probably one of the oldest day trading strategies out there. So it's always important to take note of that, which is why whenever you see an opening range break, especially with increased volume, you'll see a lot of other traders will come in and try to really accelerate price, really add to the momentum. And that's what's happening here in this case. Hopefully this video helps. Hopefully you guys are getting a little bit more context to the different types of styles of trading as there are out there. And it makes it a little bit easier for me. Obviously, if I grab the put, I would probably up a couple thousand dollars just using the same amount of capital. So if we were to take a look at that, let's see, I'm in four of these 
as we mentioned before, so four of them. So I'm using $1,700 out of curiosity if I were to take a look at what a put was going for. So just a long put. Let's go to the SPX. And then let's see what a uh, $1,700, $1,800 put would have gotten me earlier here today. So let's just say this one. Let's grab at the time in which I entered that trade, the market had already sold off. But if we were taking a look at earlier in the day when we rejected off of this key strike right here because we rejected off of the two-day anchor view up, this was also a couple confluences at that level. Yes, this trade would have essentially made the same amount of money or let's just say I went with something a little bit. Let's, let's try to find a put that are similar capital and we see right around here, just using an estimated uh, uh, place right here so you guys can see this is up a thousand dollars and the entry being similar to around here just when we broke the low of day or i'm just averaging it out again this is just for to for comparison because sometimes i think that's important to see so yes this trade is up a thousand dollars however all the spy would have had to do is just hit this level and then just bounce just a little bit like that not even go that far bounce maybe 50 cents or so and that zero dte put would be down probably 30 percent so if it's a thousand dollar trade that put will be down 300 bucks in a heartbeat and even if the put was purchased you know right at the break of the low of day or yesterday's low of day break all it would have to do is just wick down and bounce right back up and then you're down 300 bucks so i don't really like trading in those types of scenarios however if i did grab the put here earlier today that would have been a different story because the risk would have been much lower there was confluence up there as we can see right here, this is the Quant Trading app Zero DTE SPY option volume chart. So it plots these levels automatically and it will refresh if you turn in the auto refresh and we saw this level right here this is the number one call strike here for the spy it was also the previous super strike this is the strike from the previous day that had a lot of volume for both calls and puts we can see that it is also the previous number one call volume also the 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 most amount of previous put volume it is the volume range for the day so there was a lot of confluence at 4770 but again i was not looking for a short trade and this is all plotted automatically by the way on the charts as well as the two-day anchored vwap and then we also had the previous days point of control if we check out the qta discord for example you guys can see right here this is when you know i open a trade right here and then earlier in the day here today we see 10 minutes into the market open if the spy gets above the two-day anchored view up in yesterday's poc i'll take a shot at being long so that's essentially what i was waiting for i wanted us to get above this strike price to get long that was all i was looking for i wasn't really looking for a short therefore i did not take a short but was aware of the level to be long and that's something i think is important is identifying your key levels and then waiting for price action to either get above or below those levels before you react this is it right here why we wait for price to get above the two-day anchored view up in the previous day's poc in this type of pricey chop choppy price action this is yesterday's poc this is the two-day anchor view up price did not get above those two strike prices therefore i did not go long again just trying to provide a little bit more context for you guys trying to expose you guys to different styles of trading and now that we're potentially in the support zone i'm going to wait to see if there's some sort of 15 minute candle close i like that volume is increasing maybe that is the last bit of shorts now looking to cover on what is a great end of the year shorts for them but I would like the idea of selling some sort of very low probability puts and potentially adding even more PL to the day as I don't really need to worry so much about this uh, butterfly spread because now the odds of the SPX actually closing above 4790 become even less likely because if we zoom out here and actually on the SPX, let's see how much it would now have to rally all the way back up here. It has to rally about a 0.65%. It's 11.30 Eastern time, so there's about four and a half hours left in the trading day. Yes, anything can happen, so I'll make that decision once I get off this mic right now. If you enjoyed the video, leave a comment down below, like it, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.